Fernanda Moreno, the archivist at the Cuban Heritage Collection here at the University of Miami Libraries. So I'm making some Café Bustelo, Cuban coffee. And the key here is to just um, not tightly pack the coffee. So kind of fill it in as much as you can without putting uh, too much in there. Just to explain, we have an electric cafetera because we're in a library. Unfortunately, we don't have a gas or electric stove, otherwise we would be using one of the stovetop mocha pots. And our cafetera is named Alicia. Which you can see right there. So would you say pilong or bustelo or la llave is the best? You know, I don't know what contractual allegations we have. Um, and who offers us our coffee, but we buy our own coffee, so... We would like to be sponsored though, right? Yes, sponsorship yes. would be amazing. Yeah, that can... We can talk, our people can talk with your people. Alright, so I filled it mainly to the top there. And then I already put water in the base. So I'm putting... Closing it up top here. We might have a bit of a show because our rubber is leaking here. The seal. The seal is leaking, so let's see. So then... You put it on there, turn it on, and then wait until it starts to percolate. Okay, we'll be back in a minute. Stay tuned. So, <laughs> while you wait for the coffee to percolate, percolate, you start putting in sugar. I like to put about a quarter of a cup of sugar. Some people measure by lumps, but I kind of just fill it up to a little under there. Okay. And sometimes when the spoon is taking too long, I kind of just eyeball it there. Yeah, this is not an exact science. That might have been too much, let's see. I don't think it's ever too much though, do you? No, never. No. Could never be. Good. So, yeah. there we are. Okay. So we're just waiting for the water to boil and for the first few spurts of coffee to come out. And like we're essential still... to get the first coffee into the sugar and then I put it back on so it keeps going and then you want to just wet the coffee enough so that uh, wet the sugar enough so that um, it gets every bit of coffee you mix it like this and you keep mixing it really fast until it becomes sort of a light color like a pale khaki color Cafe light. yes and it gets lighter and lighter come on Amanda put some <laughs> Elbow greasing. Mm. That's good. What do you think, Martin? Looking good. good. Alright. So now we wait till a bit of the coffee keeps coming up. It's very slow today. Yeah. Alicia. Isn't this fun, guys? Watching coffee come out. I think it will come back. Hold on. Alright, so I'll turn it off so we don't burn the coffee. And then we start pouring into the sugar coffee mixture. Yeah. Look at that sugar. So the reason we did this, um, the, the oiliest, oiliest coffee at the beginning, <laughs> um, onto the sugar was to create what we call espumita, which is the foam on top of the coffee. That's and like then, two inches thick right there. Yeah. So Amazing. our espumita <laughs> game is on point. Yeah. On fleek. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and whatever else the kids call it these days. Yeah, Sahito? I think you got them all. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. So we have a selection of coffee cups. Um, we have very nice Bustelo cups. Uh, we actually have the advertising collection that designed these, the Aye. Ricardo Arregui wow, okay. collection. Wow, see. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So here we have our nice bit of coffee. Sometimes we leave room for milk. And then can't forget to top it off with the great foam we made. Look at that. I feel like Anna Garden.
<laughs> well, there you have it, folks. Traditional, wonderful uh, Cuban coffee with proper espumita done the old-fashioned way. Thank you, Amanda. Amazing. <laughs>